Thomas Gallaudet's life changed dramatically the day he met Alice Cogswell, a young daughter of his neighbor, Dr. Cogswell. Gallaudet was really curious as to why she wasn't out playing with all the other kids, but then he found out it was because she's deaf. Now, this was during the early 1800s, and deaf people in America didn't have access to education or language. Gallaudet decided to change this when he realized that deaf people are capable of learning. He wrote the word hat in the dirt with a stick and pointed to his hat, to which Alice understood. With funding from Dr. Cogswell, he went to Europe to learn sign language so that he could come back to America and teach deaf people all across the country. Gallaudet's inspiration to teach deaf people, like Alex Cogswell, created great changes in America that are still seen today. When Gallaudet came back to America, he came with a French teacher of the deaf named Laurent Claire. On the boat ride back, Gallaudet taught Claire English and Claire taught Gallaudet French Sign Language. Together, the two created the American School for the Deaf in 1817. It is the first school for the deaf in America, and it still stands today in Hartford, Connecticut. Eventually, more and more schools were created. In fact, one of the schools that were eventually created is called Gallaudet University, and it is the only university in the world for deaf people. French Sign Language from Claire mixed with the home signs created by American deaf people at the deaf schools and created American Sign Language. American Sign Language actually has more in common with French than it does English. Now, the deaf community was thriving and really starting to come together until the year 1880. In 1880, the Second International Congress on the Education of the Deaf, more commonly known as the Milan Conference, was held and dramatically changed the future of deaf education for the worse. Alexander Graham Bell, yes, the Alexander Graham Bell, played a huge part in this. He supported a type of education for the deaf known as oralism. Oralism teaches deaf people to lip read and speak orally instead of using sign language. Alexander Bell convinced everyone at the Milan conference that oralism was the best way to educate the deaf so that they could fit in with the hearing community. This caused deaf teachers to be replaced with hearing teachers, students had their hands whacked with rulers if they were caught signing, time was taken away from their education so that they can learn how to speak. It was terrible, and this ruling of oralism set the deaf community back by a hundred years. Luckily, as time went on, changes were made. In 1960, sign language was finally considered an actual language. After linguistics studied it, they realized that sign language has its own syntax and grammar just like any other language. In fact, sign language has five parameters that it must follow. The first is hand shape meaning that hands must be shaped a specific way for every sign. Second is location, meaning that the sign has to be produced around certain parts of the body, depending on the sign. Third is non-manual markers, which means facial expressions. Facial expressions have to be incorporated. Fourth is movement. Each movement of a sign must be done a certain way or else it can mean something completely different. And last is palm orientation, means that the palm has to be facing a certain way, either away from you or towards you or wherever, or it can change the sign. At the 15th International Congress on the Education of the Deaf, they decided that deaf children should be allowed to learn in the language that works best for them, regardless of if it was spoken or signed. Though this conference only modified the rules of the Milan Conference, they were finally taken out of practice at the 21st International Congress on the Education of the Deaf in 2010. Sign language in America is now blooming. The deaf community has a rich culture and history. Sign language is more accessible now than it has ever been, thanks to the Americans with Disability Act. But sign language, has, sign language is also being taught in schools as a second language. And none of this would have been possible without everything Thomas Gallaudet did to make it happen.